And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today we're going to talk about 8 Minute Empire Legends. Now, 8 Minute Empire is the second game in a series, I don't know how many in the series will be, uh, from Red Raven Games, uh, an, a terrific company that makes games on Kickstarter. 8 Minute Empire was an empire building game that was supposed to take 8 minutes, which of course is not true. Uh, as I said in my original review, it's actually like 15 minute empire. And this one I think is closer to 20 to 25 minute empire, but that doesn't sound as cool. This is essentially the same game in a different setting with fantasy theme overlaid on it a bit more and with special power. It's basically like a deluxe version of the original one. Uh, kind of, sort of. Let me show you how the game plays and we'll be back. The first thing you do in the game is you make a map. Now you're supposed to make it like a T like this, but you have different boards and they have different sides. So there's different things on each side and you really can put them in any orientation that you want. You know, I could even, I could do it like this. It doesn't really matter. You just connect the dotted lines on them. Then each player is gonna have cubes of their own color. You're gonna put cubes in the middle of the center region and then one player will pick a spot on one of the other islands and players will put one cube there. Now this is a four player game, but you can play with two or three players also. Some of the things will change. Players are gonna get a certain amount of money depending on the number of players. For example, in a, nine player, uh, in a four player game, you get nine coins. Players will bid on whoever gets to go first. And then the game begins. Six cards are gonna be laid out along the board. And on a player's turn, they can take any one of these cards that they want, but they're gonna use this card to see if there's a cost with that. So you can see, for example, that you can always take the leftmost card for free, but if you wanna take this card, for example, you need to pay two coins. And once a card is taken, let's say this is the card that's taken, then all the rest of the cards slide down and a new card is drawn to put in that spot. Now each card has two parts to it. The bottom part of the card gives you an action. There is placing more units on the board and there are placing cities. These are kind of linked to each other. When you place a city, each player has some cities of their color. They're these little wooden Cinderella castle type things. And you will place one of those anywhere you have a troop already. When you place soldiers on the board, you place a number of units that it shows and you can put them either in the starting region or anywhere that you have a city on the board. The next card will show movement on This one shows movement of three cubes. So when I do this, I can say, okay, I'm gonna move uh, two cubes here, one cube here, or one cube here, one cube will move two spaces up there. Or I could just move one cube across the water because to get across water, it's a three to one ratio. So it costs three movement to go across water. Some allow you to do multiple things. For example, the Dire Giant lets you put out three and kill someone else's cube that's in the same territory as one of yours. Now, players also will get the top thing. Each of the top things will give you maybe perhaps a special ability, like Dire Eye here shows wings. For each wing symbol that you have in front of you over the course of the game, you're minus one to go over the seas, so this it would only be a two to one if I owned the Dire Eye. The Cursed Tower, will give me one victory point for every flying unit. So if I had the Dire Eye and the Curse Tower, for example, at the end of the game, the Curse Tower would give me a victory point because the Dire Eye has a flying. The Dire Giant here is immune to attack, so people can't attack me. The Dire Goblin and, and also the Ancient Tree Spirit have a bunch of potions at the top of them. Um, or elixirs, I guess is what they're called. At the end of the game, whoever has the most elixirs is going to get a bonus of two points. This card over here, the Cursed Mausoleum, whenever you use a card that moves people, this gives you one extra movement. And so that's basically what they are. Most of them are going to be cards that give you extra movement, or they'll be cards that give you victory points at the end of the game. Um, they're, you know, for various reasons. This one gives you victory point. If you have both of the mountain cards, this one gives you one victory point for every three coins that you have. The forest elf here lets you put out an extra dude at any time you put dudes out on the board. Um, the arcane temple gives you one victory point for every arcane card that you have, etc. So players are going to be doing that, and they're going to be moving these guys around on the board and manipulating them. And, of course, it's not going to stay and look like this. As time goes by, you'll see cubes from the different players 
in different spots. Now, at the end of the game, you're going to get points. The game will end when each player has a certain number of cards in front of them. For example, eight cards in a four-player game. At the end of the game, you'll look at each territory, and whoever controls each territory is going to get a point. So, for example, Gray's going to get one, two, three, four points because they control these territories. Then you look at each island, and whoever controls, whoever controls the most territories on an island will get a point. So here, for example, Gray would get one, two, three, four, plus another point for controlling the whole island. Over here, you can see that the white player gets one point for controlling this territory, and that territory, since it is the whole island, they basically get another point. Players will do these points, plus cards, plus the two points for whoever has the most elixirs, and whoever has the most points is the winner of the game. The game comes with some variants that you can play. You can play where each person gets a leader card, which gives you special ability. For example, the White Knight, whenever you build a city, you also add an army. And then in the game, he gets a victory point if he controls an island with three or plus regions in it. So there's four of these cards you can randomly hand them out. I actually wish that they had included like 10 of them, you know, so that you'd have even more chances. Then there are a bunch of little tiles that you can place on the board at the beginning of the game just to liven it up. Like I could put a portal here and a portal down here. And it's as if those two are next to each other. I could put um, all different, like I could put this thieves token on the board and anytime you go through there, you lose a coin. Um, there's all sorts of, there's tiles that you can put face down and when you go into that spot, you get something either good or bad. Like for example, this magic book is worth a point if you find that one face down. Also at the end of the game, if there's a tiebreaker, you win the tiebreaker. You can put citadels down, which basically just makes the regions you put the citadels in an extra point. Essentially, these are ways just to uh, add some variety as to how to play the game. All right, so there you have it. This game is phenomenally better than the first one. Uh, and I'll, t I'll tell you why. Because the first one, you took a card, did the action, and then you got sets of cards and they were worth points. Well, sets of cards is kind of boring. This one is much more interesting because when you take cards, you have to determine what action do I want and what special ability slash points at the end of the game do I want. And you're also watching what other people do. Because of that, more options, the game is going to take longer. It just is. For example, you know, the game's called Eight Minute Empire, but in a four player game, everybody has eight turns, right? So that means you have 15 seconds per turn. That is never gonna happen. No one is ever going to pick a card uh, of the six available cards. Which card is the best one for me at this point in time? In 15 seconds, do that, take the action. Which is the best spots to go on the board? Pass the next person. Never gonna happen. In fact, I would argue that you're gonna go up to 30 to 45 seconds per turn, which dramatically increases the amount of time of the game. But I say all that not to knock on the game because the game is still short. We're talking in at, at most a half hour game here. Now it's not really a empire conquering game, it's an area control game and it's a good one. It's a mean one, it's a dirty little game you know, where you get and fight each other and you really can hurt other people in this game. But it's fun too and I think for the full essence of fun, you need to throw in the variants. I like the leaders, wish there was more, but I like them. I like the extra of the portals. I, I always play with the portals. Always some usually play the citadels, you know, because it makes the map different. It makes the map more interesting. For me, I would never play the first one again. Eight Minute Empires. This one is way better. The artwork is cool. I've always liked the artwork from them. Uh, the cards are neat. It's really easy to teach and play. I guess maybe the original one, if I was teaching some people to play who never played these types of games before, maybe that's the one I would use. But if I was going to keep just one of them, this would be the better one to me. Now, if you've never played one of the 8 Minute Empire games, I don't mean to endlessly compare them. This is fun. There's really no game out there like this that is a light area control game, but it has some bite to it that plays in a quick amount of time. This is really, I mean, Red Raven Games is really on the money with the games that they've been putting out. And this is a superb one, one that I would recommend, 8 Minute Empires Legends. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door! Yeah. Yeah.